This video is brought to you by the Edinburgh Watch Company, who specialise in the buying and selling of fine Swiss luxury watches in the beautiful city of Edinburgh and online at edinburghwatchcompany.co.uk. Hello and welcome to The Watch Guys. This is a channel for enthusiasts by enthusiasts. If you're interested in watches, if you're building a watch collection, this is the place for you. I might not be as vivacious as Jenny L, or as knowledgeable as Teddy Balthazar, or as funny as Ricky from Scottish Watches, but I do have a pretty decent watch collection and I'd like to share it with you. This week's watch is one that I've been stalking for many years but never got round to buying, but finally I have. It's a limited edition Omega Speedmaster, it's a Moonwatch anniversary, and it's this, the Omega Speedmaster Alaska Project. So welcome to the Omega Speedmaster Alaska Project, one of the most curious and beguiling limited edition Moonwatch anniversaries that you can buy. I've loved this quirky white dialed watch for many years, but it was only when I was actually making my episode on the Moonshine 50th Anniversary Speedmaster that I sort of rekindled my love for it and then went on the hunt. I did a full history of the Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch and the Special Editions in my 50th Anniversary Moonshine Gold episode. So please, if you want to go and watch that, click here and you'll find out all about the origins of the Moonwatch and how NASA and Omega got together. So I won't cover that in detail again here. I'll focus on this watch specifically. So this week I'm going to take you through the history of this watch, tell you exactly why I love it, how I bought it, and of course, the full unboxing. So if that sounds good with you, let's get on with it. First of all, though, a quick wristwatch check. Under the red jumper this week, I've got this, a Jarge Le Coultre Polaris Memovox Tribute. This is a 2018 watch that I bought from the London JLC Boutique. Shout out to Henry there. It's limited to a thousand units, and the reference number is Q90, 38670. This is a recreation of a classic 60s JLC and what I love about it is it's faithful to the original but with modern materials. I also really like the fact that it's got a proper mechanical alarm and the idea with this one is that you wore it on the outside of your wetsuit and as a reminder that you needed to surface it features a buzzer type mechanical alarm which then you would feel through the rubber of your wetsuit, and this has it as well. Now, the Alaska Project is a watch that's been on my radar for quite a long time. Why? Well, I'm a bit of a sucker for white dials, and this one has the whitest dial of all. So later on in this episode, I'll tell you exactly why I love this watch and how I bought it. But first, a little bit of history about this very historic model. So the Omega Speedmaster Alaska Project was launched in 2008, reference number 311 Three two four two three zero zero four zero zero one. It features the 1861 movement, which is an upgrade over the original 861. The only real difference between the movements is that Omega brought in rhodium to replace the previous copper to give it much better anti-corrosive properties. This is a manual winding watch and it's 42 millimeters and in stainless steel. It's limited to 1,970 pieces, which is a little odd because the Alaska Project was created in 1969, and it's believed that less than 10 out of the 1970 were sold directly in the UK. So this Alaska Project, launched in Baselworld at 2008, is a tribute to the original Alaska Project watches, which began in 1969. It was an effort by Omega and NASA to create the perfect Moonwatch, something that could withstand all conditions, all heat, all cold. And it was designed specifically so that it could withstand the temperature variations on the dark side of the moon. It's called Alaska because it's very cold there, quite obvious really. And the specific aims of this program was to make sure that the chronograph was protected in all conditions and that it was readable, it was legible in all conditions. There were four Alaska Project variations. The first one in 1969 was the prototype. It had a white dial, a 46 millimeter titanium case, mineral glass, red sub hands, and a caliber 861 movement. The Alaska II came in 1972, my birth year, no coincidence, and that featured a white dial 42 millimeter case, 
was a steel case and featured a Hesalite crystal instead of the original mineral glass. It also featured the original 861 movement and it had black subdials. Then you had the Alaska 3 launched in 1978. This one actually featured a black dial, 42 millimeter case in steel again. It still retained the Hesalite. It was still a caliber 861 movement and it was the Alaska 3 that was actually given to space shuttle astronauts during testing. Then came the final iteration. This was the Alaska 4 in 1979. And this is where things got a bit crazy because all of a sudden, instead of a traditional 861 movement, they went for liquid crystal. So it was a digital LCD display, 36.5 millimeters, steel case, back to mineral glass and featuring the 1621 LCD. When you look at this 2008 tribute, it mostly resembles the Alaska 1 and 2. It's kind of a cross between those. Why a white dial? Because of course it reflects the heat of the sun more effectively. And why did they settle on Hesalite? Well actually one of the things that people don't realise about Hesalite is it's already anti-reflective. So you don't need an additional anti-reflective covering on it. The downside about Hesalite, it's easily scratched, but fortunately it's also easily replaced. Another thing to highlight about this Hesalite crystal is that if you look really, really closely with a loop, you can see that there is in fact a little omega symbol right in the center, indicating, I guess, that it's an original part. And let's not forget that this very special Speedmaster also comes with a recreation of the original thermal shield. There you go. You take the steel strap off and it fits inside the thermal shield. You also then fit the cool white Velcro strap to it. This was designed to go on the outside of a spacesuit, obviously. Now this is an aluminium anodized red thermal shield. Red was chosen for its superior heat resistance and also reflective properties. And with this in place, the Alaska Project watches could withstand atmospheres of minus 148 degrees to plus 260 degrees. Exactly what you need when you're working on the dark side of the moon. I mean, come on. How cool is that? Look at it. Will I ever bother to fit this and this to my watch? Let's face it, no, but it's nice knowing it's there. So now let's enter Unboxovision and do a full unboxing of this very special limited edition watch. So as you can see, it's in a large black card box with the red Omega logo on the front. You take that off and inside you've got a rather cool leather oblong case. You then also get a special certificate of authenticity, which is a fold out booklet. It's got the unique number again listed on it. And it also shows you how to adjust and take off the straps and swap them for these special straps. And then next to it, you can see a confirmation of the limited seriousness of this watch, including the unique number, your warranty, and the security pictograms. The operating instructions is one of those huge thick black and white soulless books in multiple languages, but it does tell you exactly how to use this watch more effectively. And then you get into the leather oblong case itself, and this is where the magic really happens. So as soon as you open it inside, you've got the watch sitting there beautifully on the left hand side. You then have the anodized red aluminium thermal shield in its own special little box on the right. And it highlights there the minus 148 degrees to plus 260 degrees that the thermal shield gives. If you lift out the thermal shield underneath, you've got the tools for adjusting the watch. Again, in red anodized aluminium. And then you also have in this box two white leather straps, one which is Velcro based, which is what goes over the outside of your spacesuit. That again has Speedmaster limited edition written on it and the temperature variation. And then you also get a smaller Velcro fabric strap, which is more suited for wearing on the normal wrist. But I think you'll agree that it's a real special event to open and look at this box. This is how packaging should be done. So why do I find this watch so interesting? Why did I buy it? Well, is there anything more arresting than a white dial Speedmaster? Come on, most of them are black. But when you see this with its ice white dial, you've then got the black sub dials, which incidentally are in the shape of command modules. Look, they're in the shape of command modules. I absolutely love that touch. I think that's probably the single reason 
why I love this watch so much. That little element of detail, you couple that with the white dial and the red chrono hand, and it just screams NASA. It screams Apollo 11. And I have to say, I'm completely seduced by that. You've got three subdials. Two of them are related, obviously, to the chronograph feature, and the other one displays the seconds. You've also got a black bezel with silver markers on it. It's just got a fresh, vibrant feel about it. But I think it's the little details that totally make this watch and why it's a pleasure to wear. The stainless steel, together with the white and that little splash of red, I just think it's a really beautiful, classic piece. Will it go up in value in the future? I think it probably will, but that's not really the reason why I've got it. I just think it's so different to all the other Speedmasters. And it also gives good loom, this watch. I'll tell you, look at this. Look at that. I mean, come on, that is really special. I'm loving that Hesselite dome. I think that's really nice and old school. Incidentally, if you want to learn more about the Speedmaster Anniversary Special Editions and about Speedmaster generally, I do recommend this book, The Moonwatch Story. Very, very cool stuff in here. So how did I end up buying this watch? Well, as with many of you, I spend a lot of my time on those watch Websites, you know the ones, Chronex, Chrono24, Watchfinder. And this one had been a long-term resident of my wish lists. It was only really when I was creating my 50th anniversary Speedmaster Moonshine watch that I was reviewing all the different special editions and which ones I think I liked the most. And I came across two of these watches. One originally was sold, I think, in Singapore, and one was the UK. And even though the UK one was a little bit more expensive, that's the one I went for. So in the end, I bought this from Vintage Speedmasters in Harrogate. They have no idea that I bought this watch specifically and they have no idea about this channel. And I have to say it was a very smooth transaction through Chrono24 and the watch arrived a few days later. Simple, no hassle whatsoever. And actually looking through the stock of Vintage Speedmasters, I've seen a few others that I sort of like. No, no. No more. So that's it. That's why I love this Omega Speedmaster Alaska project. And I hope you've learned something about the history of this watch and what makes it special. Thank you for watching The Watch Guys. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click that notification bell so that you get informed of all future episodes. Please also check us out on Instagram at watchguys.tv. And there will be another Watch Guys episode along next week.